Hey y'all, welcome back to another Testimony Tuesday. This is my friend, Brother Bill Moore. I've asked him to give his testimony. Brother Bill, first tell me, what, first off, how old are you? 55. 55 years old, and tell me what you do for as your career. Right now I'm a program manager on a defense contract. On a defense contract. Are you retired military? Yes, I'm retired military. What branch of the military were you in? Air Force. Air Force, okay. I've asked Brother Bill to give his testimony, so I want to set the camera up and let him go to it. <clears throat> yeah, so I was raised in church, uh, actually. Loving parents, they took me to church from as early as I can remember. And uh, of course, in church, I heard about Jesus. I heard the Bible stories. I could tell you all about Noah's Ark and Jesus and how he was crucified. Uh, but I did not understand the significance of it. It didn't make sense to me. It, you know, it was a group of people who were trying to live right because Jesus lived right. But I didn't understand about sin and my need for salvation. And so, as a result, you know, I, I was not saved even after going through church, Sunday school, vacation Bible school. I was not saved because I didn't make the connection. It was the difference between knowing about Jesus and having a relationship with Jesus in my heart. Uh, my uncle, who was a Presbyterian minister, gave me a Bible for high school graduation, which I thought was ironic because at that time I wasn't going to church at it. But there's God working, supplying His Word to me. Because even though I was away from God and I didn't see a need for God, uh, He left His Word with me and I took that to college and I put it on my bookshelf, and I, it sat there, and I never read it, but it was always there. I would take it out, and I'd pack it back, and I'd carry it to my next dorm, and so on and so forth. Uh, and I thought I was just being a good person, and that was all that was necessary. So years later, I graduated, uh, joined the Air Force, uh, and uh, continued my life as it was. Uh, drift, you know, trying to be a good person, but really not, honestly, because uh, I got carried up with the world and all the antics of the world. Um, got married, uh, married Hannah in 1989, and uh, right after that, I uh, was selected to go to training in Texas, and while there, she was praying for me. <laughs> And so my wife had an immediate effect on me, and I thought, hey, that's great, my wife's praying for me. It was just a funny thing for an unsaved person to say, right? Uh, and the irony of that never really sank in, but uh, I knew deep down inside I needed to be in church, at least at that point. I needed to be in church. I knew that was the right place for me. I didn't know why, but I knew I needed to be there. And my wife encouraged me that we needed to go to church, and we started searching for a church to go to. Uh, toward the end of training, uh, uh, graduated from training, and she, you know, she was pregnant with our first son, Andrew, and I went to my next training assignment, so moving around a lot. Uh, Andrew was born during my next training assignment, and holding him in my arms that day, it struck me as the responsibility of a father of a precious life and how God was good to me but I didn't know it then but I was struck by how precious that little baby was and uh, God started tugging on my heartstrings. We moved again after I finished training and uh, we joined a church uh, in Spring Lake, North Carolina it was uh, 1992 is when we got there, just after Andrew was born. And um, he, uh, he had ar actually already been working to help Andrew because he had a condition actually before we moved there uh, that required him to go to the children's hospital in um, Arkansas where we were in training, where I was in training. And uh, he could have died there within weeks of his birth because he had a condition that required surgery. But he saved Andrew, and I, there again, you know, working through my children as he worked through my wife to tug on my heartstrings. So we were in North Carolina now, and uh, we started attending a church, uh, Spring Lake Assembly of God, 
It's where I finally heard about uh, the third, the, the whole story of salvation, about the need for repentance and why Jesus died on the cross for sinners uh, and my need to accept him as Savior and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Um, so Easter 1992, uh, I kneeled and accept Christ as my Savior and, and that was a wonderful moment. Uh, you know, I could join the church, I could be a, a, have that peace, but I still had one foot in the world. Um, I was a new creature, but I was still drawn by my former life and, and the lusts of the world and the lusts of the flesh. Um, and I was not living for God or, or in obedience to God. Um, there were offers of baptism, and I chose not to which is in disobedience to God's word. I moved again, we moved again, uh, this time to Korea, and I continued drifting. Uh, you know, you change churches a lot and you lose your discipleship group. Uh, and so I did, and the allure of this world continued to draw me away. Uh, I was trying to live right as a Christian. I would read my daily bread every morning. <laughs> It's not enough. That's trying to live the Christian life in the flesh. I had no power to live the Christian life. I needed to, to focus on God, and I didn't. Um, praise the Lord for uh, BIMI missionaries there at the uh, Mission Baptist Church there in Osan. Started attending there on the recommendations of my sponsor. So there again, God's drawing me to a church that preaches the gospel even more so than the one in North Carolina. And it was a great opportunity. Uh, Andrew was old enough now. We, he uh, attended Vacation Bible School, I think it was 97 or so. And he got saved in Vacation Bible School. I was ecstatic. I was glad. But there again, I was not connecting his salvation with my lack of power trying to live the Christian life in the flesh. And I got to a point where I was at a desperate crossroads, and God made it manifest. He reproved me of my sin and disobedience. And uh, I don't remember the night exactly, but I was on my knees at my bedside, weeping, um, begging God for forgiveness, and um, asking Him to accept me, to cleanse me of my sin, and to bring me back again into fellowship with Him. And uh, so I continued uh, with peace in my heart about that uh, as I uh, struggled through the correction that he and the chastisement that he had in store for me. Uh, we moved again. We moved to uh, back to Arkansas and attended a Faith Baptist Church there in Jacksonville, Arkansas. And of course, David had come along by now. I didn't mention him, but. Um, uh, he was able to receive uh, some upbringing there, uh, but it was finally at this new opportunity to live, this new opportunity to live for Christ, a new start, if you will, moving to a different place, a new church, that uh, I attended Sunday school and um, God impressed on my heart to be obedient to him, which I hadn't been for seven years and so Andrew hadn't been baptized in Korea uh, I don't remember why but and so because I hadn't been baptized and he hadn't been baptized essentially no it was uh, 1999 November of 1999 uh, so 19 years ago this month we were both baptized in that church together on the same day. And so that was a, finally bringing myself into obedience with the Lord and uh, started tithing and just giving myself entirely over to Him, stopped my rebellious behavior uh, because God was finally in my heart. I had finally had a, a clear relationship with Him and trying to set the example for not only my sons, but you know, my whole family. 
And uh, so that was a short time, only four months there. And uh, after being baptized in November, just two months later, we were in Japan. And uh, we joined um, the Yokota Baptist Church, another BIMI missionary run. Uh, and that's where David got saved. But I, I bring that up to bring this up, is finally had the opportunity to uh, truly live for God, you know, join the church, uh, join the choir, um, and grew tremendously. We had the, uh, an Awana uh, club on Friday nights that uh, made a tremendous impact on my sons and me as the opportunity to uh, be a part of that Awana missionary uh, mission work and also to be a Sunday school teacher. So God used that time to really help me grow as a Christian because he offered me opportunities to serve as well as an opportunity to uh, grow in this fantastic. Thank you, Brother Bill. I appreciate it. It sounds like the first thing, first influence that you had about anything about being a Christian was a wife that was praying for you. Yes. So she was saved yes. before y'all got married. Yes. And so... Uh, a Christian wife will get things rolling. So having somebody pray for you. So we're praying right now for you that's watching this video. If you're lost and undone without Christ, we're praying that you'll trust Christ as your personal Savior. Thank you, Brother Bill. I appreciate it. Take care.